Welcome to Electron Line. Our next example on friction has to do with a bracket on a pole. We have the bracket here that has two rings. They're attached to the bracket and we're trying to put a load on the bracket. Now the closer we bring the load to the pipe here, the less torque we're going to have and the less friction we create between the two rings and the pipe. The farther away the load is, the greater the torque, the greater the friction. Because the greater the torque, the greater the normal forces you're going to have on the bottom and the top ring. And of course, the greater the normal force, the greater the friction force, because by definition, the friction force is equal to the normal force times the coefficient of friction. In this case, we're going to assume that nothing is sliding, so we'll take the static coefficient of friction. So what we're trying to figure out is how close can we bring the load here before the whole bracket begins to slide? What is the minimum distance x at which we can still apply a load of 100 newtons to that bracket? We're going to start by figuring out the normal forces here at the two brackets. And we do that by saying that the friction force at A is defined as the normal force at A times the coefficient of friction. We can also say that the friction force at B is going to be equal to the normal force at B and times the, the coefficient of static friction. Now, the only forces acting in the x direction are these two forces right here. So we can say that the sum of the forces in the x direction must add up to zero, which is equal to the positive force, n sub a, minus the negative force, and sub b. E. And so from this we can conclude that the normal force at A equals the normal force at B. We can also sum up all the forces in the y direction and see what we get. We'll sum up all the forces in the y direction and those are made up of the two friction forces right here plus the load force right there. So we know they should add up to zero. We have the two positive friction forces which are acting upward. So that's friction force at A plus friction force at B minus the load force. And so we can say that the load force, F sub load, is simply equal to the sum of the two, F sub A plus F sub B. And we can replace the friction force. Oop, I should actually have friction force. I'll write it like that, that's better. Friction force like that at B and of course this can be written as the normal force at A times the coefficient of friction plus the normal force at B times the coefficient of friction. Of course realizing that these must be equal to one another you can also write this as the normal force at A times the coefficient of friction plus the normal force at A times the coefficient of friction or twice the normal force at A times the coefficient of friction. And we know that the load force is equal to 100 newtons. From this, we can conclude that the normal force at A is equal to 100 newtons divided by 2 times the coefficient of friction. The coefficient of friction is defined as 0.2, so this is 100 newtons divided by 2 times 0.2, and so that would be 0.4 or 250 newtons. And if the normal force at A is 250 newtons, then we know that is also equal to the normal force at B. So from that, we've concluded the two normal forces at A and B, which means we can now calculate the moment about one of these points. So we probably want to take the moment about point A. Let's do that. I don't think it really matters. We could do it about B. We could, it doesn't really matter which one we pick. So let's take the sum of all the moments about point A, and we know this also must equal to zero if nothing is sliding, if things remain static. And this is equal to, now of course these two forces are cancelled out because they go right through the point here about which we take the moment. We do have the force here, the load force, 100 newtons, acting over a distance of, well it would be x minus half the diameter of the pipe. So that would be a clockwise moment, which is a minus 100 newtons times x minus, and that would be two and a half centimeters converted to meters, 0 0.025 meters. I guess I'm running a little bit out of room here. And what else do we have? We have the normal force at B, which is acting in a counterclockwise direction, so it would be plus 
the normal force at B, which is 250 newtons. And that is acting over a distance of 10 centimeters, so that would be 0.1 meter. And then we have the force at B, which will give us a clockwise torque, so that's minus the force at B. Now the force at B would be the normal force at B times mu sub s, so that would be equal to 250 newtons, multiplied times 0.2, that would be equal to 50 newtons. So that would be the force at B, that's 50 newtons, and we have to multiply that times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, which would be 5 centimeters, so 0.05 meters. That gives us a clockwise moment or clockwise torque, which therefore that's where the negative comes from. From this, we should be able to calculate x, because x in this case will be the only unknown. So let's go ahead and work everything out. So we have 0 is equal to 100. Mm, let's see. I'm going to move this to the other side, so that makes it easier. So multiply this times this, move to the left side becomes positive, so positive 100 newtons times x, and then we leave everything else on the other side, is equal to a negative times a negative makes that a positive, 100 times 0 0.025, which would be 2.5 newton meters. Let's see, is that correct? 100 times that, that would be, yep, 2.5 newton meters. And let's see here, then we have this, that would be plus 25 newton meters. And then here we have minus 50 times this, that would be, again, 2.5 newton meters. Notice that the positive 2.5, the negative 2.5 newton meters cancel out. And then all we have left to do is divide both sides by 100 newtons. So x equals 25 newton meters divided by 100 newtons, which is equal to 0 0.25 meters or 25 centimeters. So that's the closest you can apply the 100 newton load force to the, of course, x is relative to the center of the pipe here, but the closer you can get is 25 centimeters. You get within 25 centimeters, the bracket will begin to slide because you're not applying enough torque to create enough friction force. Anything greater than 25 centimeters, the bracket will hold, the friction force will hold up the load force. And that's how you do that.